Continue on with ME470 Class 3. This is uh, ch from Chapter 13. We're covering with gear nomenclature, uh, gear layout, and uh, gear kinematics, that type of thing. Uh, we're going to start out with this question. What is conjugate action? It's probably even easier to explain what isn't conjugate action, right? And so here you go. Um, I always think of Conan the Barbarian, uh, the first Conan the Barbarian. If you haven't seen it, he's like pushing this big wheel around. But this guy be like uh, from olden times, gears, you know, the way that they would try to transmit uh, uh, torque and power um, by way of having these spokes. And if you can picture this, that there would be this jerky action, um, that rotating... Uh, this guy to turn this guy, it would be clunk, dunk, 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 as moving around. So conjugate action instead is when you have nice and smooth uh, transitions uh, between uh, gears, right? Uh, between things. So um, instead of having that, 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 you know, shaky, you know, motion. It's nice and smooth transference so that we have uh, um, this uh, uh, really good um, meshing and uh, uh, smooth rotation, right? So if, if this thing is rotating at a constant RPM, this thing is also rotating at a constant RPM, right? That's conjugate action. And uh, to understand how it's achieved, um, well, one method is, um, let's say, so many tooth shapes. So there's different tooth shapes that are possible, but the one that we use the most often is called an involute. And the, what, what I, I think that one of the better um, descriptions of how the involute is made or, or you know, constructed um, is to think about having wound a string around a cylinder and then holding it tight, holding that string tight as it unwinds. And so you're always holding it tight. So uh, you would, where your hand would move would be the, uh, the location of, of that conjugate, uh, excuse me, that involute uh, shape. And involute shapes, two involute shapes, one on each, one on the pinion, one on the gear, they achieve conjugate action. There's other ways to do it. I have a couple examples here. Um, but okay, so I've described that string, but it, it does, this figure maybe makes it hard to like picture that. So let's say that we're starting right here and you're holding onto a string. That string is wrapped around here. Now the thing, you start to unwind it, right, that string, but you're holding it tight. So right now you're right there and there's the length of the string. It's unwound some. And then you're unwinding it more, keeping it tight. Here's the length of the string now that you've unwound it. And you're continuing through, and here's your finger right here holding the string. And now the string is longer, so you're tracing that path. As you see, the string gets longer and longer and longer. So this is extended out way, way far for the, um, uh, for, for the uh, involute. Uh, right there, but that's the that's the basic idea. And what, here's um, from another book right here where you can see um, uh, uh, the, the two of them interfacing with each other. So it's done with gear one and gear two, and you can see how they're rolling. Now this diameter that they run the string from, that's the base circle. If you recall from uh, uh, this guy right here, right, the, this, red one right here or pink whatever you want to call it that's the base circle so that's where the string is wound around um, so that's like the significance of that base circle uh, you could see and you can see from the two of them that this right here is the line of action right here so here's also a, the the figures repeated but here's like this little animation and I think it really helps right here um, you could kind of see now that that string unwinding so you can kind of see that gear tooth shape right there and um, I have these right here which I think really kind of help these gear finger puppets to kind of see the, the conjugate action right here where it's rolling over 
and these two things they roll off of each other right so there's there's this handoff this perfect not perfect and, and by the way they're not perfect it's 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 difficult to achieve this shape in practicality so there is actually a little non conjugate action just a little tiny bit that can possibly happen and gear manufacturers they measure this uh, it's called transmission error and uh, it, it's an, it's an important thing uh, to monitor uh, when uh, trying to machine these gears perfectly but um, so when like a lot of times people will uh, uh, use their fingers when discussing this and thinking about the, the action right there but these are more like spokes um, but these are the involute profile shapes and you could really kind of see that shape and the shape isn't just some arc it's purposefully made so it follows this involute uh, uh, idea um, not as easy to see on higher pitch so this is a higher pitch gear right there and you can't quite see the uh, that that shape onto the thing it is still there um, but it's a uh, it's it's difficult sometimes to be able to like pick out when when you have a whole lot of teeth it's when you have a this is a lower pitch so that means less teeth um, uh, Yes, a low, lower pitch means more. T it mean, means fewer teeth. Excuse me. So and so larger teeth f with fewer teeth. But you can actually see the shape right there, and you can see the perpendicular, like the force we want to have this shape so that the force or the line of action is perpendicular to both profiles. Right. So that's the that's the important thing that. Um, that these curves are made just in the right way so uh, a line perpendicular to this right here is the uh, the pitch line and the same thing along there that's the important part now um, there can be other different um, uh, uh, types and uh, that can achieve conjugate action um, so some of them are done they're, they're like old styles uh, so here uh, was a cycloidal gear right here and I have uh, printed out this was from Thingiverse and I found I, I printed it out myself right here um, and you can kind of see this weird uh, uh, type of um, uh, uh, little arky thing and I think this is actually be a pretty difficult to machine right so but um, what we can do is we could kind of you could kind of see uh, this is not an involute shape, but it is achieving conjugate action right there. Another one, and this is this was harder to do. This is probably uh, more ancient, right? Before involutes were maybe able to be machined, this is one where it operates on these multiple disks right here. And maybe I'm too zoomed in too far right here. And uh, it's a pretty high gear ratio right there, right? So you could see. Um, so, so the, these these little discs right here, interesting enough, they kind of like uh, uh, kind of shift back and forth as they move right here. Hopefully, you can kind of pick up on that. Interestingly, right? But this gear, this is the input to the thing, right? And it's got like a. Um, I think I can take it apart. This was hard to print and get to come out great. Uh, see, this is very tight right here. But you can see that that little guy right here is forcing um, this thing to be offset. And then also there's another one back there. So um, that right there, the, the change in there is the thing that makes that possible to uh, to get it to turn as a uh, with conjugate action right so now we have a smooth rotational uh, transference like if this is a constant velocity rotation input right here this is a constant ro uh, velocity output and there's also this is reversing the direction which is actually uh, something that happens in, in, in gears so uh, that's an interesting um, thing right there, right? This uh, uh, 
be involute profile. So maybe I'll make that as just a short, uh, um, a short video and then move on to the next part of it.